Welcome to the NIHR Dementia Researcher podcast, brought to you by DementiaResearcher.nihr.ac.uk, in association with Alzheimer's Research UK and Alzheimer's Society, supporting early career dementia researchers across the world. Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Dementia Researcher podcast. Regular listeners will know that we're big fans of Race Against Dementia. For those who don't know, Race Against Dementia, or RAD for short, is a global charity founded by three-time former Formula One World Drivers Champion Sir Jackie Stewart to fund pioneering research into the prevention and cure of dementia. They've only been around for a few years, but they've really been disrupting the system, sure that quicker results can be achieved when you're agile and follow some of the principles you find in Formula One. Funding researchers for longer periods, providing support and innovating. In today's podcast, we're joined by RAD's scientific advisors and their chief executives to discuss their latest news, the RAD Discovery Hub, and a brand new project. I'm Dr. Sam Moxon from the University of Manchester, and it's my pleasure to be hosting today's show. I'm delighted to introduce our very special guests, Bridget Barker, RAD Chief Executive Officer, uh, Professor Philip Skeltons, who is a Professor of Neurology at the Alzheimer's Centre Amsterdam, as well as a Managing Partner of the LSP Dementia Fund and Chair of the World Dementia Council, and Professor Siddharth Chandran, who is a Professor of Regenerative Neurology, Director of the Centre for Clinical Brain Sciences at Edinburgh, and the the Ewan MacDonald Centre and the Anne Rowling Regenerative Neurology Clinic in Edinburgh, and Group Leader in the UK Dementia Research Institute. So some very prestigious guests to to talk to us today about some really exciting things that are going to be happening in the future. So hello everyone, and thanks for taking the time to join us today. Hello. 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 So let's start by setting the scene and reminding our listeners what RAD is about. So Bridget, if I can come to you first, uh, would you like to start by introducing yourself to the listeners and telling us all about Race Against Dementia and its overarching mission, please? Yes, thank you. Well, I became the CEO of Race Against Dementia last June and have found it a very exciting place to be. There's lots going on. Um, As you've mentioned, it was founded by Sir Jackie Stewart with the idea of trying to accelerate research in dementia and trying to be innovative. So Jackie always says that if a car in a Formula One race doesn't do its stuff properly on one Sunday, then the Formula One team will go away and do everything they can to make sure the car is improved by the following Sunday. So it was getting some of that urgency and problem solving uh, initiatives into medical research. And as he would say, having a different way of doing business So that's what we're all about. And we've done it in a couple of ways uh, by appointing some early career scientists, some RAD fellows, but also by supporting a couple of projects, one of which, of course, is the uh, RAD Discovery Hub that we're going to be talking about today. Okay, great. Really exciting stuff. And I think that's a, a really interesting way of looking at the problem with this sort of Formula One engineering perspective, the idea of constant innovation and constantly trying to make things better. Uh, so that's a really a really good way of approaching things. Um, Siddhartan, if I could come to you next, would you like to introduce yourself and tell the listeners a little about yourself and the work that you do uh, up in Edinburgh, please? Yeah, so um, I'm very pleased to be speaking here. So I'm an adult neurologist and I'm interested in age-related neurodegenerative conditions. And in a sense, what I'm trying to do, it's not complicated, it certainly isn't rocket science in the sense that uh, for too long, all we have done as neurologists is describe disease. And, and we need to uh, move into an era where neurologists can diagnose disease early, give uh, information to individuals about their own personalized journey, and then offer meaningful treatments. And I would see the initiatives uh, kicked off by Jackie as a key step in uh, attaining that goal. And um, working together with other colleagues like uh, Philip, we're trying to come up with um, innovative and disruptive approaches to try and uh, drive some breakthroughs. And there's a a point you made there, which I think is quite key as well, this this early diagnosis, because obviously we're we're talking, and we'll probably touch on this later, about a disease that at the moment when it is diagnosed, it's often too late for, for patients to get really any effective therapy. So I think that's another really exciting avenue, this idea of trying to bring that diagnosis earlier so that we can actually get into a, a, a you know an, an efficacious um, therapeutic window yeah I, think just, really I mean key. Sam Sam just on that point I mean it's not just diagnosis because 
um, it's, if you like, stable doors and horses. So um, what we really want to do ultimately is to be able to identify reliably people who are at, at risk never mind early in the journey of dementia, um, because that will clearly open up more opportunities for smart intervention. Yeah, that's the thing that's really important. And, and Philip, last but by no means least, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about the, the research that, that you, you conduct? Yeah, like Siddhartha, and I'm also an adult uh, neurologist. I like that term. I'm a professor of neurology since uh, 20 years, and I started the Alzheimer's Center. And my career actually spends almost 30 years of looking for better biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease specifically. And we started out with MRI, then came CSF, then came PET imaging. Um, and then the latest kid on the block is, uh, is plasma biomarkers, actually. And this all has to do, first of all, of course, with an early diagnosis, early detection. And and, and the, the thing that we learned is indeed that the disease is, is present for so long already before clinical signs and symptoms occur. And the next thing is, of course, to use those biomarkers to identify the right patients and to, um, and to treat them uh, with new therapies and to find an effect on these biomarkers as the earliest sign that they are effective. So I think for me, it's very crucial that we finally now come, we, we, we transcend from this discovery phase in biomarkers we know a lot more about the disease the underlying process we can't we can diagnose the disease much earlier and now we have to translate that into meaningful therapies and that's that's actually the call that jackie made uh, a couple of years ago and he said well you are too slow you are too old and you haven't done anything uh, to to make things better and that was of course uh, not nice to hear but in essence he's right and we have to speed up and that's typically what uh, what RAD stands for, and and mainly also the innovation that was mentioned both by Bridget and Siddhartha. I've learned also from him that uh, any car in the Formula One races is never the same between two races. So they they continuously innovate, they continue to change, and that's the thing that we perhaps in the field should take uh, should take as a, as a message as well. Yeah, and that's the key point in the fact that that constant innovation and I'm. I'm not going to spend the podcast talking about Formula One, even though I am a, a huge fan. But no, is that is that more evident in the Mercedes car last year, which at the start of the season was was you know looking quite poor, and at the end of the season was winning races. And I think that same attitude, and it's it's interesting you talk about the importance of translation. And I'm sure it's the same where you know where you guys are, but here in Manchester as well. There's this new focus on translation, bench to bedside. Okay, what you're doing is interesting, but how can we translate that to the clinic? And when yeah, and exactly. we translate yeah, and that, that's where our project actually comes in. That's typically bench to bedside. So the bench here in this case is with Siddhartha and, and the bedside is in Amsterdam. We work together in order to to speed up uh, a drug development specifically for frontotemporal dementia, one of the disorders where there's actually nothing happening almost, uh, sort of in, instead of Alzheimer's, there's less, uh, less development there. So we thought it would be good to join forces uh, also with other centers, by the way, but it's try to create a, a platform that we work together on to, to speed up drug development. And actually on that last point of drug development, if I can focus in on what I want to start our discussion on today. So Race Against Dementia recently announced the funding of the RAD Discovery Hub. And I was reading about this, this, this the, the other day and I noticed the first spoke is the Race Against Dementia Drug Discovery to Clinical Trial Project. So going from drug discovery all the way into clinical trials and hopefully into the clinic. Uh, and it's part of this joint research partnership between, as you said, you know, uh, the guys in Edinburgh, uh, team sort of led by Sadatan and your, your team in, in, in Amsterdam. So I think we could spend a bit of time to talk about this because it's quite an exciting project. And if Sadatan, if I can come to you first, is there anything you'd like to tell us about this, this drug discovery to translation project? Yeah, um, th th there's several things here, um, but the starting point is one we're familiar with, but it's worth rehearsing again, you know, and it's despite decades and billions of dollars, uh, we're not really further forward in identifying medicines that will change the disease course of these conditions. So that, that's the problem we're trying to tackle. Um, now, there are various approaches one might consider for identifying medicines for which there is biological plausibility to justify undertaking clinical trials. Okay? And, and the key element here is, is not whether the medicine will work in the trial, but have you got a sufficient evidence base 
that it justifies formal evaluation in what you might think of as the key experiment. And the key experiment is called a human trial. Okay. So then the next question, well, how does one identify medicines? And we can think about this in short term and longer term. Short term would be, let's say, the next five years, and longer term would be five to ten years. So there is, over the last three, four decades, a classic route to pharma-led drug discovery, okay, which centers, as you all know, on uh, identifying the target that we believe is biologically important, so it's, and then identifying the right chemicals, and then shifting those chemicals into medicines uh, that will be uh, tolerated and safe in people. And then you have the clinical trial. It takes long enough to say that, but it takes even longer to do it, and it's very expensive. And that's called target-led discovery. And that's today's orthodoxy in pharma. That approach, uh, which may well be correct, but at the present time, uh, hasn't um, really delivered any major breakthroughs in the dementia space. I'm just parking the discoveries and the uh, work around aducanumab, uh, humanized monoclonal antibody, just for this conversation. Okay. So uh, this project is not about classic target-led discovery, which would be a 10-year play and probably into the tens and tens of millions. There is an, an alternative approach which is complementary. It doesn't replace. It's in addition to. And it's exploiting um, uh, technologies that are now state-of-the-art and continue to evolve. And in no particular order, they would include human stem cell-based discovery platforms, very powerful, including with gene correction, uh, different ways of interrogating information, so high-end automated imaging, different ways of synthesizing and then curating data. So we might think about machine learning and AI. And if you bring all of those together, you've got a new approach to um, how one might select prioritized ranked drugs for trial. And this also now becomes feasible in an academic setting. So th this could be academic pharma, right? So then, then even if you have all of those technologies, which we do, and we're not unique in that, uh, and we have those technologies, and this is another key point to emphasize, because of a collaborative approach to the research. So the research that Philip and I are embarking on not only brings together Philip's gang and the Edinburgh gang, it brings together specialists from cancer drug discovery, hardcore basic neuroscientists, machine learning scientists, imaging scientists, and so on. So take it um, that we have that, which we do. The question then is, what drugs might one begin to screen? So there are many drugs already out there that are licensed okay, and approved by the FDA or the EMA or the MHRA in the UK. And the question is, could an existing medicine that is licensed for a different indication have some utility in dementia? Now, that might, that might sound crazy. It's called repurposing. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, so let me speak to that. So repurposing is not new. It's actually, it's, it's as old as the hills. Okay, so if you think of a drug like aspirin, which is off pattern, cheap as chips, that has multiple indications from a heart attack, a stroke, pain relief, migraine, increasingly colonic cancer, and so on. Viagra didn't start out as Viagra. It was a, it was a medicine for a different condition and obviously had a side effect. I also have an interest, clinical interest, in multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is that rare chronic neurological disorder for which there have been breakthroughs in disease-modifying therapies. The vast majority, the vast majority of licensed billion-dollar medicines for multiple sclerosis are repurposed. They're, at, they're pharma repurposing of existing medicines, most of which have come from the immune world and or the cancer world. And some of them are, are actually chemotherapies. So repurposing has a long tradition, okay? but it's gone out of vogue in, in some circles. And what this proposal uh, will do is use the platform I've tried to describe to, in the first wave, screen and evaluate existing 
FDA approved libraries of drugs to see if any of them might be useful when exposed to assays that recapitulate key elements of the pathology of frontotemporal dementia. Yeah, and that, that last point, you know, is, is quite quite interesting because if you think about, you know, as, as a neurologist, a good example is, is migraine and one of the most effective therapies for that is Botox, which is repurposed from something else. So, you know, these repurposed drugs can have a massive impact. Uh, Philip, have you got anything to add uh, to that? No, no, I think so, so the essence is that uh, the, the repurposed drugs are very interesting because all the safety and tolerability is known. So you can directly screen for their efficacy in the models that Siddhartha describes. Do they have an effect on the pathology of FTD? Uh, and then that is actually the next step is uh, this is all about accelerating drug discovery and drug development is that we in Amsterdam at the same time, we are assembling a group of patients that we call a trial ready cohort with the different FTD uh, patients in there. We do research on what is the best outcome measure in order to quickly identify uh, whether there is an efficacy of the drug or not, and also uh, on the biomarkers that we could use. So, and in that sense, we will perform also a platform trial, meaning that you use one placebo group and several arms in which you can test several drugs at the same time in that group of people. So this is all about creating a, a drug ready, a, a sort of a, a trial ready cohort with, with meaningful endpoints and meaningful biomarkers. And the nice thing is that we do this in conjunction. So both teams will meet. Uh, both teams will immediately know from each other what each other are, is doing and what kind of drugs are are considered and what kind of endpoint we then need to make. So this will ultimately sort of cut out several of the of the of the time sort of uh, consuming elements that were there in previous times. Yeah, and and if I can just come back to that then, do you have any targets or compounds already in mind, or are you still at the early stages yeah. of working out you know what what to look for? Sam. Sam, that's a good question. Um, I, I think uh, we we do have some uh, candidate uh, promising targets, but I don't think they're yet ready for prime time. They're certainly um, undergoing evaluation. Uh, the, the other point I might just add, Sam, and uh, which goes back to what Bridget said and also touches upon uh, Philip's observation, is that um, a key element of the RAD or the Race Against Dementia Vision is to identify talent early and then create a long enough runway for the talent to flourish. Okay, And, and the talent is early in terms of uh, people within just a few years of their PhDs being identified and then supported in every way, including leadership and communication skills. And this program that Philip and I are leading, in some senses, is actually no different. Uh, I mean, despite Philip and I being young at heart, uh, biologically, we're, we're perhaps older than the group that Jackie Stewart wants to see supported. Exactly. And, and we've recognised that. Um, and what we've done is we've identified brilliant, uh, biologically young, uh, early career researchers who are also working with us and, frankly, will be leading this, supported by Philip and I. So I want to give a shout out to these guys. Um, and, and that aligns very well with the grander vision. So Philip and I are there as, uh, as guiding, and obviously we, we are deeply involved, but so much of Jackie Stewart's vision is about identifying and then enabling the next generation. Yeah, so if I can just come back to you then, Sadan, um, on that point. So is that part of what makes this different or what else makes this, this idea different? And, and how can we speed up the process? You said, said Jackie is very interested in trying to speed up this I think process. several things make this different. First of all, I mean, for me, it's, it's fantastic to work with somebody like Philip. Okay? Uh, Philip has you know, decades of experience in an area that, in my view, doesn't get enough attention. So often the attention is focused on the discovery side, so the laboratory science, but the clinical science of um, trials is as important, they're equally important, and also de developing the right outcome measures so that you can genuinely determine success or failure, and if it's success or failure, you understand the mechanism of why that happened. Um, so this is huge. So just bringing Philip and I together is personally, for me, extremely uh, valuable, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. But it's also brought in this these younger folk, our colleagues, that's excellent, and then, one of the things about this money, which is 
it's it's a, it's a lot of money comparatively, but it's got a high level of discretion. Okay, meaning we've got enough freedom to operate to be imaginative in how we use it. Okay, and so we can use it in ways that are flexible and creative, where you can then leverage other investments in our own institutions. Okay, so for example, I touched upon the Edinburgh side of this, but remembering that this is very much a, a seamless partnership between Edinburgh and Amsterdam, but the Edinburgh crowd who are involved in this um, are drawn from all walks of um, scientific backgrounds, and I think that's a strength. And we can use this money to seed activity and, and generate so much more in terms of the, the purchasing power of the investment. And that's because it's not a conventional grant where it's over-policed to debt with endless reports uh, and... and <coughs> Uh, and where every penny uh, at every moment needs to be thought about and accounted for. So that's not to say we're profligate. I think we're being imaginative and we're leveraging the money. Yeah. Yeah. I would just add, I mean, aside from all the things that Siddhartha said, which are completely true and, and, and vice versa also are sort of... Um, uh, I would like to say as well, it's a real privilege to work together and to getting the groups together as well. And that's some of the things that Rata actually sort of Race Against Dementia made possible. Uh, the young people included, and, and we will just be sort of supervising the whole thing from a distance, but they have to really do the job and that's fantastic. But the other thing I would like to add is not only the leverage that the money can bring, but also the fact that we uh, could in a relatively short period of time make make clear what we want and get this sort of money from race against dementia makes a huge difference because if we would have uh, had to write an application to the respective in sort of instances in the uk or the netherlands it would have taken at least a year or two and would probably have been judged as too experimental too f uh, forward looking in the sense and there is no sort of so you really need this sort of money in order to speed up and that's that's the i think that's the worst feedback you can ever get on a grant it's too forward thinking how can you be too forward thinking when you're tackling such a big issue but it does happen if, but if a grants a grants money is actually always sort of basically given to the research that you already did yeah and i believe bridget do you have something to say there I well i just i just wanted to add that uh, from rad's point of view we're delighted that the people who are helping siddharth and, and philip have become what we're calling rad associates so they're not rad fellows because they they haven't got a fellowship from us but we are supporting them they've become part of the rad uh, fellows team and we're trying to support them in the same way as we support our fellows so by giving them presentation skill training mentoring them um, and making sure they have leadership as Siddhartha mentioned leadership training performance benefit training in the same way as a Formula One driver would have something so how wonderful in your as Siddhartha says biologically early days to be told what's going to make you sleep better eat better and succeed yeah. better uh, yeah, all of these that, things we're giving to that's too late for us and, and i think that's great. Yeah, absolutely well it's certainly too late for me you're still working on um but you know it's a, it's a great benefit um, i'll come back to you in a second actually bridget because i do have a couple of, a, a question about about the uh, the fellowship program but but before i'd like to just um cap off this part of the conversation and ask philip if i can to really drive home then why this project was needed what the problems are with the current systems that this, that this is going to um, address and how this collaboration actually came about in the first place. I think it would be good for the listeners to know how this, you know, this whole thing so to address these questions quickly, um, I think the, the, the need is to, to speed up drug development. And uh, this has all gone really far too slow. The, the, the cascade that Siddhartha sort of mentioned is from going from discovery to phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three. This all takes a lot, a lot of time. And there are ways to speed this up. And this is by ways of collaborating. And, and and having the groups that actually do should do the trials from the discovery part to the execution, bring them together and work together. So that's one. I think the, the way it came about is that both Siddharth and myself are uh, advisors to Race Against Dementia. So we were in close contact. We actually met for the first time at a meeting, uh, a steering committee meeting uh, from of the of the Race Against Dementia uh, team at that time. And we enjoyed working together so much and we uh, sort of had a common sense that we wanted to really speed up things. Well, of course, inspired by Sir Jackie. Uh, and I think this makes it, this whole endeavor really very special. That's really exciting. And um, so I know we, we are 
uh, getting tight for time, but there's a couple more questions I think it's important to get out first. So Bridget, if I can come to you. And a, a little mention on the RAD Fellowship Programme, which has quickly become one of the most desirable fellowship programmes, partly because you know you do get this long-term investment in your research. Do you hope to have more hubs and how does this fit in with the wider plans of Race Against Dementia? Well, obviously we're delighted to be able to support this um, discovery hub and it's great to be able to uh, work with Sadatan and Philip on it. Uh, we don't know if we're going to have more hubs. It really depends what happens in the future. Um, this is a pilot project and we'll wait and see how it goes. We've got another project that we're supporting in Geneva where we also have another RAD associate. So we've got four associates in total. Um, I think it's watch this space and see what comes forward. But if, obviously, if exciting ideas come, are put to us uh, that we think should be back, we, we will consider them. Um, but we are certainly certainly focusing on RAD Fellows and we are fundraising heavily and trying to make sure that we can have more RAD Fellows in the pipeline. Could I just add also to Bridget's yeah. observation? So whilst this proposal that we're discussing or this programme is linked together Edinburgh and Amsterdam, our ambition, uh, and Philip had touched upon this at the beginning, is to extend this to all relevant departments that can advance the mission. Okay. And that includes opening this up to the existing RAD fellows. And actually that, that leads on nicely to my next question, Sadan, which is, which is something I wanted to ask you, because obviously you've been involved with Rate Against Dementia for a while. So if there's any funders who are listening to this, could you briefly describe to them anything, any lessons you might have learned from what, from working with Race Against Dementia and what's different and what you'd like to see more widely adopted as policy based on what you've seen with, with, with Race Against Dementia? So um, I think um, so I would strongly um, welcome others to support Race Against Dementia for various reasons. I, I love that the Race Against Dementia's sense or culture of controlled urgency. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, emphasis on um, its understanding and willingness to take calculated risk and risk in terms of going early with talent, backing it the whole way, right? And using every tool that Jackie Stewart and others have in terms of their networks. Yes. So bringing in engineers, data scientists, who have a fresh perspective on, on, on these problems is, is unbelievable. Yeah. And a good example is the um, initiative um, and partnership with James Dyson, okay? yeah. who's obviously a phenomenal engineer and entrepreneur, because the science we're talking about is an example of entrepreneurial science. We want to drive entrepreneurial science to begin to give solutions that will begin to uh, improve the outcomes for people with dementia. And it's very, very goal focused, uh, Jackie Stewart's uh, vision. And, and we all sign up to that. Um, and, and I like this idea of um, uh, there is no obstacle that we can't solve or bypass. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a really nice philosophy to take. And before I end with the final question that I'd like you all to answer, Bridget, I'd like to come back to you just briefly and ask if there's anything else going on at Race Against Dementia at the moment, anything you'd like to flag to the listeners that may be of interest? Well, I think Siddhartan's already mentioned um, the fantastic support we've had from Sir James Dyson. And um, as, as was um, revealed last week, he has, he has given another million pounds from the James Dyson Foundation to support the work that's being undertaken by one of the RAD Fellows at Edinburgh. And that, again, is going to support more early career researchers and younger people who are helping with these projects. And we've had a number of donations from very generous people who have bought into Sir Jackie's vision. And the more we, money we can get, obviously, the more we can do and the more people we can support. So I'm very focused on that at the moment. It's very exciting. So I'd, I'd like to end with a final question and then you'll all get the opportunity to answer this, starting with, with Philip. Uh, but this is a question we try to ask in all of our shows, which is what advice would you give to any early career researchers who are listening to this? 
Oh, well, my advice is to um, to enjoy uh, research as much as possible. It's probably the best thing you have ever done in your life. And especially if you devote your career and your research into this specific field, it's probably the most needed and most, most important part uh, in research that I could think of. So um, do your best and, and you will really sort of after this, after you have done your first years of, of research, there will be a, a multitude of things that you can do with it. It's a very rich uh, career path, I would say. Definitely. And, and Bridget, anything to add to that? Well, I think it is a fantastic opportunity. If you become a RAD Fellow and you get all this training, just taking advantage of all the opportunities that you're given. I think it's fantastic. And, and Sudan, any, any final words of advice? Um, I'd keep it, yeah, I'd keep it simple. I'd say uh, think think big yeah. uh, and do not cap ambition. That's, that's a really nice, nice final word to end on. I think that's a good, a good philosophy. So I think that's all we have time for today. So, so to summarise what we've learned, it, we've, we've learned about the new Race Against Dementia scheme and initiative between Edinburgh and Amsterdam which is very much open for collaboration by the sounds of it this this ambition to drive forward the discovery of new therapies and really get it translated to the clinic and I think Bridget summed it up nicely with the phrase watch this space so I'd like to finish by thanking our guests Bridget Barker Professor Siddharth and Chandran and Professor Philip Skeltons for joining us today and having this really interesting discussion we've got profiles of all the panelists on the website and a link to Race Against Dementia so please take a look you'll find that in the links and I feel sure that Race Against Dementia would also welcome any support that you guys could offer who are listening. So if you're looking for a charity to raise money for this year, this is one you should definitely be considering. And we'll be back in two weeks' time, so have a great week and keep researching. Brought to you by DementiaResearcher.nihr.ac.uk in association with Alzheimer's Research UK and Alzheimer's Society. Supporting early career dementia researchers across the world.